Good Saturday morning. I hope that you are enjoying this beautiful spring day. I know that days like this are made to get out and work in the yard or enjoy time with your family, your friends, and your neighbors, but I would encourage you to continue practicing social distancing. It's very important that we do this, not only for, the, for our health and safety, but also the health and safety for others. Now, I need to tell you that we've already been making plans for the time that we'll be able to reopen the church. Now, obviously, I don't know when that will be. I hope that it will be sooner rather than later. We'll, we'll take the guidance of the health experts into mind in making these decisions. But I know that a lot of things are going to be different when we are able to be together. So we might as well start getting ready. We will almost assuredly be asked to wear face masks when we come to church. And we might have to take some of the medical professionals uh, in our church to take temperatures of us as we enter the church building. We're also going to have to continue practicing social distancing, and that will be a challenge. We've already looked at ways to maybe begin a second worship service for that time so that some of you can come early, some of you can come late, and we'll be able to maintain that social distance of six feet between each other. And another thing that will be different is that handshakes and hugs will be, have to be replaced by fist bumps and loving words. No more joining hands at the end of the worship to sing, they'll know we're Christians by our love. And no more long lines at the back of the church as you go out and, and, and greet me. Now, I love seeing you after worship, but it will be impossible to maintain social distancing by doing those things. We'll talk about how we need to, or what we need to do at a later time, but just be thinking about all these things. Finally, it might be necessary to postpone Wednesday night activities for a while. The, our classrooms are simply too small to maintain a six-foot distance around one another. But you know what? We're going to get through all of this. We'll, be, we'll make those adjustments, and we'll grow stronger as a church because of it. So keep all of this in your prayers. And if you have some other suggestions about things that you think we should do, please feel free to give me a phone call or text me with your suggestions. With all, in that, with all of that in mind, let's get into today's video devotion. If you have your Bibles, let's turn to Matthew chapter 6, verses 9 through 13. Matthew 6, 9 through 13. Hear what Jesus says. This, then, is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. A few years ago, I was teaching a Sunday school class when I heard some words coming out of my mouth that absolutely shocked me. I was talking about some of the challenges of living a Christ-like life. And I heard myself saying, I love to read the Bible, but I really don't like to pray. As I was listening, I, I realized that was something that, I, that I'd felt for a long time, but I'd never really acknowledged it to any other person, including myself. The problem was I simply disliked praying with a passion. All of this went back to when I was a teenager and I was struggling with depression for the very first time. You know, depression is a strange thing. It can, it can lock into something that's going on in your life and just... Just, just torment you with these thoughts. For me, the vulnerable spot that depression hit was the question of my salvation. Now, I'd grown up in a Christian home, and my mom and my dad led me to Christ, helped lead me to Christ when I was 10 years old. But as I lapsed further and further into depression, I began to doubt that that experience had any validity in my life. I was terrified that I hadn't said something or done something that would allow me to spend eternity with God in heaven. Eventually, I got to the point where I prayed the same prayer hundreds of times per day. I'd pray, Lord, if I'm not saved, please put a tug at my heart. I would wait a few seconds. No tug would come. God would send, give me a sense of peace, which would last for about 30 seconds. And then I'd start praying the same prayer over again. This went on for almost a year. Now, through God's grace and a lot of counseling, they didn't have the kind of medications that we have now to treat depression. 
I eventually emerged and got healthy again. But this experience left me scarred for life. Whenever I tried to pray, those old feelings would come, come back to torment me once again, and I'd feel like I was in the same place I was at when I was 15 years old. When it was time to have my morning devotion, I'd almost have to force myself to begin praying. The moments the words, Dear Heavenly Father, came out of my lips, the old feelings came back, and I just shut it down. But you know what I learned through all of that time of struggle? I learned that before prayer can be a joyful, life-affirming experience that makes you happy and gives you peace with God, first, it has to be practiced as a discipline. It's like any part of spiritual growth, Bible study, worship, ministry, witness, you name it. Sometimes you have to make yourself do it, and when you do it, God will bless you. I can't help but thinking about what we're going through now with this this coronavirus pandemic. We're trying to cope with a terrible illness that has already killed uh, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of people around the world. Millions of people are sick. We're dealing with an economy that's teetering on the brink of disaster. Our daily lives have been disrupted and changed possibly forever. And in this moment of fear and uncertainty, it's easy to doubt God. You find yourself saying, where are you, God? Why, haven't you, why have you let this thing happen? Why aren't you doing something to stop this thing? From personal experience, I can tell you, when you start having thoughts and feelings like that, your prayer life is going to suffer. At times like that, I've discovered that uh, when, you, when, you, uh, when you need to pray, when you need to pray, but you can't seem to pray, you have to make yourself pray. Over the years, I've felt, found great comfort in the things that the Bible tells us about prayer. First, the Bible teaches us that our prayer life should be, doesn't have to, our prayers don't have to be fancy or long-winded. The Lord's Prayer is really short when you think about it, probably shorter than the average blessing that you say at the dinner table each night. Second, your prayer doesn't have to be polished or worded just right. The Bible says the Holy Spirit intercedes with the Father in words and groanings that we can't even imagine. In other words, the Holy Spirit searches your heart. He finds your deepest emotions, your deepest concerns, your deepest worries, and He expresses that to God the Father so that God will know exactly what He needs to do. The third thing that I've found is that... uh, through all of this, you can enjoy, come to enjoy your time of prayer. The, one of the ways that I do it nowadays is I will, I'll picture a little child toddling up to their father. They crawl up in their daddy's lap because they know their father loves them. And it's, 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 they're ready to hear whatever daddy has to say. In Matthew chapter 7, verses 7 through 11, Jesus says, Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives. The one who seeks finds. And to the one who knocks, the door will be opened. Which of you, if your son asks for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will give him a snake? If you then, though you are evil, or meaning sinful, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give great gifts to those who love Him? Now, I hope that you're not as neurotic as I was about prayer for those years. But if you are, if you're having some struggles to pray now, let me offer this word of encouragement. Pray, pray, pray. Even if it's hard, especially when it's hard. And God is going to pour out His blessings in your life in ways that you can't even begin to imagine. Will you join me in prayer? Heavenly Daddy God, thank you for this time that we can think about prayer. Father, it is a gift that you've given to us. And help us to focus our hearts and our minds on you and desire that daily time spent with you in prayer. Father, make us powerful 
through your power. And we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I hope this devotion has been an encouragement to you today. I hope that you'll join us for Sunday morning worship tomorrow. Now, remember, we're going to be celebrating the Lord's Supper tomorrow, so be sure to bring your, get your bread or your crackers and a cup of juice so that you'll be ready to share the Lord's Supper during the worship tomorrow. In the meantime, I hope you have a great day. Please know that I love you and hope to see you soon. God bless.